Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady, and today I'm reviewing this, a BMW X5 M50i, a V8 non-M, but still with an M badge version of the X5 SUV from BMW. So in this review, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the interior, exterior, and take it for a quick spin to understand some of its driving dynamics. So let's get started with this review of the BMW X5 M50i. All right, so first a big thank you to Porsche of downtown LA for giving me access to this X5 M50i today. If you happen to be interested in this car or any other new or pre-owned Porsche product, leave me a comment down below or just send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady and I'll make sure you get taken care of. Now let's start off the review by talking about why this has an M badge in it, even though it's not a full M car, starting off with the engine. So this gets a 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 making 523 horsepower and 553 pounds-feet of torque. It's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission and it's putting power down to all four wheels. So this motor is actually found in a lot of higher end BMW M cars like the M5, the M8, and even the M version of the X5, the X5M. So this is quite a potent and powerful engine. Now, some of the other things you're gonna get as a part of the M50i package is a active M Sport differential in the rear to help put the power down equally. In addition to that, you'll get adaptive M Sport dampers, which allows you to firm up or soften down your ride characteristics based off of your driving conditions and it's also tied to the driving modes. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the X5 M50i has the ability to be optioned with an air suspension. Now I experienced the air suspension in the X7 M50i and if that was any indicator I would assume that it's wonderful in this car as well because it was wonderful in that car but I'll give you a general sense of what it feels like without the air suspension and then you can just make your decision on your own. Now some of the other characteristics, I mentioned this car does have all-wheel drive and it has the ability to send 100% of the power to the rear wheels and because of that all-wheel drive system this thing has the ability to tow up to 7,200 pounds so long as you option in the tow hitch which is I believe $550. Now as far as the wheels go you get 20 inch wheels on all four corners and they're wrapped with a 275 section tire. Now what does all of this translate to? A zero to 60 time of 4.1 seconds in this big monstrous SUV, which is very, very respectable. Now one thing I did leave out earlier about what you get as a part of the M50i package is that it has a M Sport performance exhaust. So I'll take you around back so you can take a listen to what this thing sounds like. All right, so what did you think of the V8 noises coming from this M50i? Leave me a comment below with your thoughts. But now let's switch over into some of the more practical items because people are gonna buy these and drive them on a daily basis, carry around their family, go get groceries. So let's talk about the cargo space. So the way you open the trunk, there are multiple methods. There, so there's a button on the interior, there's a button on the key. So long as you have the key with you, there's comfort access. You can open it using this button here on the license plate or on top of the license plate. And then there's also a kicking motion underneath the bumper. So once you open this thing, you'll notice that the X5 has a, I guess, two-sectional trunk opening. There's this one traditional one that opens this way and then there's also another one down here which is a smaller portion which opens also electronically and this is very convenient number one to sit on and number two uh, when you've got groceries in the trunk or uh, anything else in the trunk and you open this hatch 
it actually secures things in the back for you when you've got this top portion open. So now let's talk about the space. There's 33, almost 34 cubic feet of space in the cargo area of the X5, which is substantial. Depending on how clever you want to get with racking and stacking, you can fit multiple, multiple pieces of larger traveling equipment with you, uh, duffel bags, whatnot, groceries, uh, Home Depot stuff. So no issues with the back of the uh, X5 or at least as far as the cargo space goes. Now, if this wasn't enough, you do have the ability to fold down the rear seats and this expands it to 72 cubic feet of space. So a substantial amount of room in the back of your X5 M50i. And of course, this is the same for all X5s, not just for the M50i. Now, one thing I do appreciate very much so is the fact that BMW has put in release latches for the rear seats from the trunk of the car. Now, I've reviewed countless SUVs where you gotta go inside the passenger area, pull on a latch or pull on a strap or whatnot, and then drop them from that portion, from the inside of the car. But BMW has put it in the trunk, which is still technically inside the car, but it's in the trunk area. So if I'm loading something and I need more space, I don't need to stop, go in there, put down the rear seats. I can just lower them both from the back or the trunk of the car, which is a very, very good convenience feature. Now, as far as closing the trunk goes, they're both electronic closing. So this lower section here, don't try and close them at the same time. It'll get confused and stop the operation. So one at a time, there's another button here. So that's basically the trunk space. Now let's go on to the interior and I'll talk to you about what it's like in there. All right, so now the interior of the X5, and this is actually a pretty familiar looking place to the X7 that I had a chance to review, and that's not really a surprise. Most BMWs nowadays have the same interior, especially when you look at the SUVs, the X7, the X3, the X5, they all pretty much have the same design. So let me give you some of the details and overall how I feel in here. So the quality and the design, the quality is really nice, especially because this has the upgraded extended merino leather package and it's with this tartufo brown, almost cinnamonish uh, leather color and it's got some cross stitching, which you get as a part of the M50i as standard. So it's actually a really nice looking seat, very comfortable and the overall quality in here is very very nice and the design is the same I like the way the infotainment system is blended into the dash it's not some afterthought that's kind of stuck up on there so I like that a lot now as far as the overall sizing and the comfort I'm 5'11 you can see I have plenty of headroom up here my seat is not in its lowest position so somebody much taller than me would not have any issues fitting in the X5. As far as the seat itself, quite surprising because of the adjustments that it has. So it does have side bolstering and it can get pretty uh, tight or, or aggressive. It can hug you really nicely if you're driving quickly. And the opposite end of that, once you deflate them, it's actually a very, very comfortable seat. The cushioning is really nice. And this car is actually optioned with massaging seats, uh, which I believe is a thousand dollar option. And the massaging seats are actually on right now as I'm talking to you and they work very nice. There are several different massaging modes and levels as far as the aggressiveness of the massage, but the overall seat comfort and the overall size is wonderful in the X5. Now switching over into technology and the infotainment system, so you have two 12.3 inch screens, one as your gauge cluster up front, which gives you a whole bunch of information, very crisp, very clear, nice, easy to read gauge cluster. And then the infotainment system is also 12.3 inches. It's a touch screen. Also the same things, as I said about the gauge cluster, crisp, clean, easy to read. I do like the BMW iDrive system a lot. It's actually one of my favorite and the gesture control just turned on as I was doing my hand motions there. Uh, but I like it a lot because it's pretty simple to use and the learning curve with it is quite short. You can run Android Auto and Apple CarPlay if you didn't like BMW's iDrive. So that's always a wonderful feature. And overall, some of the other amenities, you do have this wonderful, very large panoramic roof 
full glass from front to the full back seat of the passengers and i'll talk about the back seat here in a second but very nice there as far as charging methods go you have three options you have a wireless charger you have a usb type a and a usb type c here in the center compartment so nice to have multiple options charging is always something i pay close attention to so that's basically it on the front seat now let's move to the rear and i'll talk to you about what it's like back there all right, so now the back seats of the X5, and let's talk about the overall sizing and the overall comfort. So I'm 5'11", again, and I'm sitting behind myself. You can see that I have plenty of leg room. Headroom is also not an issue, couple inches above here. So somebody taller than I am would also fit back here comfortably. The overall seat cushioning is also very, very comfortable, just as comfortable as the front seats I was talking about earlier. And the overall space, the way I sit, it's a nice, comfortable back seat. As far as width-wise, how many people can you fit in here? I would say three adults would fit just fine. Maybe a little bit of a squeeze because of shoulder room, but of course, leg room would not be an issue. Three children would fit back here just fine. Now, some of the other amenities, charging. This is something I always cover. It's not only important for the front, it's probably maybe even more important for the rear for your backseat passengers because even your kids nowadays are connected with devices. So you have dedicated charging ports right here conveniently placed in front of you. Uh, so this is a USB type C. There's also a USB type C over there on the other side. If you're carrying a third passenger back here, they're going to have to make do with a 12 volt outlet, but at least they do have the option for charging as well. Excuse me. Now, uh, the uh, four zone climate control system. So each zone in the car has the ability to set their own temperature for their comfort levels. And as always, the glass roof is a wonderful, wonderful feature. And it's something that I always like to have in cars that I've owned previously. So option it in. It's really cool for your backseat passengers to look out of and even for you as a front seat passenger. So that's pretty much it on the interior. The back seats are nice. The front Front seats are good, nice design, nice quality. Uh, the infotainment system is also very good. So overall, a nice functional interior and a nice place to be. So now let's move to the driving portion of the review and see what this thing feels like behind the wheel. All right, so now the driving portion of the review. And as always, this is what the key looks like. Just a regular BMW key, less metal than what you would get in some of the more expensive models like the 7 series or some of the m models uh, but it does have the m logo here so or the m colors uh, but otherwise nothing really distinguishing it from being an m50i versus the lower trim level 40 or 45 i think it is now anyways let's go ahead and turn this thing on and go for a quick spin Exhaust is not the loudest at startup, but it does give a nice rumble with that V8. So let's go ahead and put this thing in drive, release the parking brake and go for a spin here. And immediately as you set off, you'll notice that you've got a really nice high driving position nice command over the road and the seat i forgot to mention during the interior portion it's a 20-way seat so there's a lot of adjustment in this front seat uh, or the driver's seat so let's go ahead now and put it in sport plus mode and the cool thing about it is uh, the seat will adjust uh, to if you've got it configured the bolsters and such but now let's see, let's put it in manual, let's put it back in one, and let's hammer it. Oh yeah, it moves. Very, very surprising actually. It's not the fastest car uh, or SUV. Uh, granted, of course, it's a big, heavy SUV, but let's try it again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> this thing really has some scoot in it and can get up and go. Uh, the thing I was mentioning surprising, uh, so it's not the fastest SUV, but the surprising thing about it, you look down and you're going a pretty fast pace. So this thing gets up and goes, and this is the same thing that I saw in the uh, X7 M50i. Uh, I was driving that on the highway and uh, I was going rather quickly. And then I looked down, I was going a fast pace and 
this thing is the same. It really squats down, the nose moves up, you get a really nice sensation of speed. And in addition to that, the exhaust note is very, very nice as well. So it's a properly, properly quick SUV. Uh, I would say that that 4.1 second zero to 60 time is as advertised and will probably meet that and definitely feels very, very quick. So now the transmission. So the ZF8 speed is fantastic. Whether it's doing the upshifts or the downshifts or whether you're doing it manually with the paddles, it's a marvelous, marvelous transmission. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in manual mode. And since I'm in Sport Plus, it will hold the revs and it will bang it up against the limiter. As an example, mash it down. Yeah. It's a marvelous, marvelous transmission. So now, some of the other things about this M50i. So the steering is very nice as well. The feel is lacking, but feel is lacking in a lot of new modern BMW cars. Uh, but the weight is, I think, tuned right for daily driving. It's not too heavy. It doesn't require way too much effort to turn the wheel, which is something that gets annoying. Even in the Sport Plus mode, it's something that you can maneuver if you wanted to. But now I'm gonna put it back in comfort mode and tell you about the suspension, which is the most surprising thing about this car. And the reason why I think it's the most surprising thing about this car is because it's properly sporty and there's a lot of feedback. You feel the road, you drive over a bump, you feel it. You drive over a pothole, you feel it. This is not one of those soak up the road type of SUVs. It's not the most comfortable SUV that I've driven. Now, don't get me wrong. When I say comfortable, the seat is still very, very comfortable. It's immensely cushiony and supportive, but the suspension itself, you definitely feel it, especially when you go in the sport in the sport plus modes, you feel all of the road imperfections. It comes through from the chassis and into the, and uh, into your seat. And the seat does a good job of somewhat masking it, but this is not the most comfortable riding car. Uh, and I don't know if that's because of the uh, M adaptive shocks. I'm assuming it is, but one other thing is that I don't know if you were to bump down to the lower trim level, the non M50. So I believe it's the X drive 45 if that will have a more comfortable ride because that doesn't have the M shocks or the M adaptive dampers. It's on a fixed, probably tuned a little bit more for comfort. Now, one thing I will tell you is that the X7 M50i that I drove with the air suspension, now it comes standard on that, it's optional on this, that was much more comfortable than this car in all aspects as far as the overall feel and the way uh, the comfort and the loftiness of it. So if you want a little bit more comfort in your M50i, definitely check the box for the air suspension or, or in general, if that's your expectation, if you want a really comfortable riding SUV, check the box for the air suspension. Uh, and it, because it makes a world, a world of a difference. So uh, those are the surprising elements as far as the suspension goes. Now, overall, uh, what is this car? What do I think of it? I think BMW has gotten really good at making cars uh, in general and putting aside their more recent designs uh, with the i7 and the uh, the M3 with the big kidney grills and whatnot, and the overall BMW fanboyism. If you put all that aside and you just view it objectively, like I'm trying to do, uh, I think BMW makes fantastic cars. And uh, it's no different for their SUV lineup. They're getting really, really good at making SUVs. And the X5 being their longest tenured SUV, I think it provides a wonderful driving experience, very refined, very well thought out, simple things like uh, the trunk, uh, the release in the trunk uh, that is for the rear seats, uh, simple things like that. And then the fact that it's got the two folding lift gate or the two sectional lift gate to hold in your groceries or, or whatever the case may be, or something to sit on. 
So uh, th these simple things, the overall interior experience, the ergonomics, the way things work, the way things are laid out, it just provides a very refined uh, driving experience and an SUV experience. The only thing I would have to say is, again, that suspension topic. If you're looking for something more on the comfort side, go drive the regular uh, X5, the one with a straight six, uh, or get the air suspension or get the X7 M50i because that rides a little bit more comfortable than this. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you've got any other questions, please make sure you leave me a comment down below or send me a message on Instagram at DriveSteady. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Until next time, drive steady.